Hi everybody, Chef Decker here with your latest installment of your COL 150 Culinary Math video. Um, we are past the halfway point of this semester and of this course. So some of you have been um, working really hard to get to this point and are doing really well. And some of you may have hit this point and begun or continued to struggle. So hopefully this video will help you. Also, please watch our Facebook page, your texts and emails because I will be sending you some announcements um, for some open tutoring days that I'm going to do. And I'm even buying lunch. So free tutoring with me um, during a lunchtime hour and I'm buying lunch. So what could be better? Okay, let's talk about section 4.1. And in section 4.1, we are calculating portion size or number of portions. So to do that, I'm going to write on the board behind me the formulas that we will be doing. Um, and then I'm going to solve one of the more difficult problems for you. So that if this section gave you trouble and you're going back and you're trying to review it, then you can review this video and you can go over the homework problem that I'm going to solve and hopefully it will help you. And then if you're having any more trouble, well then you can come to our drop-in tutoring session. Okay, so let's go. So in 4.1, when we're calculating portion size or number of portions, here are the formulas that we're going to use. Okay, now let me back out of the way um, and hopefully I'll zoom a little bit so you could see that more. So you'll see that in section 4.1, the formula that we're going to be using is AP times yield percent. So in this case, you know how much of a product you ordered or picked up or how much came in. You're gonna multiply it by the yield percent. Now remember, there are two ways, um, at least two ways that we could come up with yield percent. So what are those two ways? One, one, we could go to the back and look in the book of yields. Two, we could do a yield test ourselves. And which of the two is the most accurate? Well, I hope you said two. Your own yield test is most accurate. And if you're wondering why that's true, go back and review section uh, three, the entire section on that, okay? So some of the problems will say, if you were able to fabricate blah, blah, blah from blah, 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 how much should you be able to fabricate from this amount? In that case, you're performing a yield test in order to get to this, right? Because they'll say, how much should you be able to get from this AP quantity using the yield percentage that you came up with by doing that yield test that the problem gave? In other problems, they'll tell you the yield percent or they will ask you to go to the back and use the resource called the Book of Yields to find that, okay? So AP, times yield percent gives us our EP quantity. Once we have the EP quantity, we're going to divide by either number slash P, number of portions, or the size of the portion to solve for what the problem is asking us to solve for, okay? So write that down. I'm just gonna erase that to make room and then turn in your books um, to page 101 and I'm going to demonstrate number 11, okay? Okay, number 11 says, for a dinner event, you need one tablespoon of chopped basil to garnish each of 125 bowls of winter vegetable soup. How many tablespoon garnishes will you get from eight bunches of basil? Okay, so when we look at this, we have already learned in 3.3 that sometimes we don't care about yield percent. When don't we care about yield percent? If you said the way the recipe is written, if it expresses ingredients by count, we don't care. You would be correct. Because if a recipe, if this problem said, for a dinner event, you need one uh, leaf of chopped basil to garnish each of 125 bowls, well, then you wouldn't care about yield percent, but it doesn't say that. It says one tablespoon. So we need to worry about yield percent, okay? So using our formula, um, let's figure out what we have, okay? We say that we, what do we need? AP times yield percent, okay? So 
let's go to the back of the book of yields and let's find out some information on basil. So we, we know that we need one tablespoon to garnish 125 bowls. So 125 is the number of people that are coming. And how many one tablespoon garnishes could we get from eight bunches of basil? Okay, so the first thing we know we have, our AP equals eight bunches. And that's really all that we know so far. We know we're going to need yield percent. And we don't know anything about how much, um, how many tablespoons are in a bunch or how much a tablespoon weighs or anything like that. So what I need you to do is pause this, go to the book of yields, find out a couple things, actually three things. You're going to have to find out one, what's the yield percent on basil. Two, you're going to have to find out the weight of a bunch of basil. Um, and then you're going to have to find out the weight of a tablespoon of basil. So go find that out for me, pause it, and then come back and I'm going to finish, okay? So you should have found out that one bunch of basil weighs 2.5 ounces, okay? You also should have found out that the yield on basil is 0.56 or 56% as a decimal and as a percentage. And then finally, you should have found out that one tablespoon of basil weighs 0.88 ounces, okay? So this is the information from the Book of Yields that we are going to need, this says one, in order to solve our problem. So the first thing I wanna know, I know that I have eight bunches, I wanna know my total AP weight. So eight bunches, times the information that each bunch weighs 2.5 ounces tells me that I have 20 ounces AP of basil. And remember when I talked about this, we see AP is eight bunches, AP is also 20 ounces. Just think back to Spanish class. You learned how to say hello in Spanish, and that was hola. Now you learned how to say eight bunches in ounces. And that translation, if you're talking about basil, is 20 ounces, okay? So they're both the AP quantity, we're just saying them in two different ways. It's both the same amount. If you put that much basil on a scale, it would weigh 20 ounces, okay? So now we know that we have our yield percent of 0.56. So AP times yield percent, 20 ounces, times 0.56, our yield percent gives us 11.12 ounces, okay? After we fabricate basil, we'll have 11.12 ounces EP, right? We solved for EP here. We did AP times yield percent and we solved and we got our EP, okay? So now the last thing that we're going to do is um, we are going to figure out how to get from ounces to tablespoons, okay? So we can bridge that if we want because we know that one tablespoon is our, um, is our portion or our, how much we're going to serve. So we actually, I'll do this the long way even though you may not need to. We're going to go from ounces to tablespoons and we'll call it to, uh, what are these, one table, servings. Okay, so 11.12 ounces over one, ounces come down, tablespoons comes up, now we plug in this. One tablespoon weighs 0.88 ounces. Now tablespoons comes down and servings comes up, and you'll see now why I said this step is kind of not necessary, but if it helps you do it. We know that one serving for this soup is one tablespoon, okay? So if we multiply across the top, 11.12 times 1 times 1 gives us 11.12 divided by 0.88 is going to give us 127.27, okay? So and this says round your answer to a whole number. So this would round to 127 portions or servings of this basil, okay? 
So that was number 11. Um, I'm going to step out of the way for a minute so that if you want to review this and pause the video, you can write it down. And then um, check out video um, resource for section 4.2 because I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the formulas to solve it. And I'm also going to solve one of your homework problems. So let me get out of the way real quick so you can check this out.